We're back in Atuntas in 2024, our, our third year working with Leche of the Sun, uh, bringing a bigger impact, uh, more teammates, and, and really maximizing the opportunity and also exploring ways to make the experience and the delegation even bigger into the future. We've addressed two critical issues in Puerto Rico, uh, which unfortunately are exemplary across the, the globe. Uh, we are working with impoverished families that have a dependency on medical devices. And we've also started to address the problem and challenge of domestic violence in Puerto Rico. This is our second year of equipping a shelter for victims of domestic violence with a solar array and an energy storage system. This year we wanted to go even bigger, so we addressed a shelter that has more residents and provided them with 100% uh, energy coverage for their consumption needs. This is just an incredible year in the process of growth and it builds on the last couple of years. Um, I think of Luke's statements at the ribbon cutting at Hogar Nueva Mujer where he said this is really the culmination of three years efforts. We put the largest system to date for Let's Share the Sun on, um, you know, a domestic violence safe house and we're really very proud of it. Abby Hopper came from the Solar Energy Industry Association. It's just gonna help that center so much. So we're gonna do all of them on the island in partnership with different uh, on-island entities that uh, also match the donations of Wood Mackenzie to make it happen. It's a $100,000 install, so most grateful for Wood Mackenzie making it happen, but others came to it when they saw your commitment. So we talk a lot about energy security when we talk about solar and renewables, and often it's sort of a national perspective, right? We want our country to be more energy independent, but for a place like this, a women's shelter um, that provides services to women that are leaving abusive situations, it's a whole different meaning, right? Being able to have control over your own energy use, control over your future, control over your costs, that's a, a level of agency that folks that are living here need. Grandísima, es una falta grandísima porque cuando se, se va la luz nosotros contamos con una planta y a veces si esa planta no prende por alguna razón, esto ellas se encuentran insegura entonces tenemos que estar ahí bregando con niños, bregando con, con ellas para que no les cunde el pánico porque es tan oscura en una casa tan grande. Sí, es un impacto bien fuerte porque no tenemos un, un sistema eléctrico ¿verdad? De, con la mejor calidad que pudiésemos tener. Eh, es un poco de nivel ¿verdad? que te lleva al estrés porque se va tanto la luz, el sistema es muy débil y con tanta población que nosotros tenemos en, en el albergue eh, nos dificulta mucho a veces brindar un servicio de excelencia. Puerto Rico es un interesting microcosm of the energy transition in general. Uh, they've already been experiencing in, intensifying storm systems with the hurricanes, something that the rest of the world is starting to get uh, experience with, unfortunately. They are subjected to constant brownouts and, and blackouts. Uh, we've all seen the, the horrible long duration blackouts that they've experienced after the hurricanes, but there's ongoing brownouts, which can be very disruptive and troubling for those that depend on electricity for medical devices, education, their work, etc. Puerto Rico is an island that has a very weak transmission and distribution grid, and they also rely on fossil fuels to power the entire island. In areas like at Juntas, where there is not a stable access to electricity because of this weak transmission grid, uh, people with medical necessities are living through outages without knowing how to power their refrigerators for insulin, without knowing how their medical equipment is going to function. So that's where solar comes in to help provide the, this very much sense of security that they need. Aquí tenemos problemas con, el, con, con la energía eléctrica, se va frecuentemente. Y mi papá necesita tener maquinaria 24-7 para oxigenación, más sus terapias. Eh, normalmente tenemos que usar generadores eh, que consumen mucho combustible y ellos dos son unas personas mayores. Papá tiene 92 años, eh, mamá tiene 81 y 
eh, yo soy la persona que estoy a, al cuidado de ellos en cierta manera, aunque no vivo aquí, vivo eh, al lado norte de la isla, eh, pero vengo frecuentemente, mínimo una vez en la semana, una o dos veces en semana, para poderle ayudar. El consumo de gasolina es mucho y se nos hace un poquito cuesta arriba. Pues cuando me quedo sin electricidad, pues yo lo que tengo un, un inverter pequeñito que lo tengo ya en la cocina y lo pongo hasta que eh, lo, 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 lo prendo hasta el otro día y, y después me quedo todo el día sin luz hasta que llegue. Si no, lo vuelvo a prender por la noche y sé que tiene gasolina porque eso es de gasolina. Si no, me quedo sin nada, me quedo en oscuro. Me quedo con, con lámpara o algo, vela o algo, lo que sea. Porque no me puedo hacer más nada. Y eso. So there was a power cut yesterday. And when we rolled into town, there were generators all in the street. And the shops were noisy and it smelled like diesel. And everyone was a little bit on edge. Uh, I went in to get a little bit of breakfast and the... The shopkeep seemed very distraught. I was, I was having a talk with her and she was talking about how none of her machines were working, about how, how much money she was losing out on that day. It, it not only has a very human impact on them, on, on their quality of life, but also on their livelihood. And that was an angle that I hadn't really considered before. Transforming the movie Power Planet, I think is recognizing that we can't carry on with the world being powered in the way it is now so it's looking at what are those alternatives for people what are the right alternatives what's going to work in the communities and at that grassroots level it's not all about the top down which i think is what we can give at woodmac a lot is the top down um, whereas now we are partnering with foundations like let's share the sun it's a great way for us to see from a grassroots level how that actually works in practice and what the best way is to do it and i think coming together in those places makes a lot of sense and allows us to do the best work i love the partnership with let's share the sun uh, that they are 100 invested in creating long-lasting solutions for these people and i say people because it's not an asset they truly are building relationships with these people Year after year, they visit with these recipients, see how they're doing, make sure the system is operational. How can we improve it? Make sure that they are capitalizing on any incentives that are available. It's that relationship that makes us such a valuable and enriching partnership. They care for us as well as the recipients and to make it as impactful as possible, not on a corporate level, but on a personal level, to make sure that the, the delegates that come down and participate in the event really feel the power of kindness, love, and charity, and how it isn't just a one-off transaction, it's a long-lasting relationship. When we went to install the solar panels on, on Tuesday, we got a chance to meet the beneficiaries. Um, the, the gentleman there, he's got quite serious health conditions. He needs electricity to, to keep his um, oxygen running. Um, and, you know, his wife, you know, she's, she's quite elderly as well and takes good care, care of him. They were so welcoming and grateful for what we were doing. And that was, that was quite, quite touching. Um, the lady also made us, made us beautiful lunch. And that was just, you know, so kind. You know, they don't have, have a lot, but they were willing to, you know, provide us with food and a, a warm welcome. Um, and also, seeing around their family home and all their family pictures, you know, it's obviously a place that they love, they've lived there a long time, and it means a lot to them, and that's why they, they, they're staying there, because it's quite remote where they are. So the, the solar panels are going to continue to give them that, that level of comfort and security, it means they can stay in their, their home that they've, they've loved for so long. So the first thing I've learned about solar is how actually easy it is to install, uh, we could get up on a roof and in two, three hours have it done. The actual install is simple, it's quick, it's easy. The technology within the solar panels is, is way more complex, of course, but when we have the materials, it doesn't take that much to make the impact on people. Solar is an excellent solution uh, for these types of applications. It's easy to access, it's easy to install, they have an abundant resource, and it's available. 
So they've come to, as a culture, really embrace and depend on solar power. Our work here is to make sure that all walks of life have access to it, the most vulnerable communities. Uh, we are meeting with families that we've helped previously, talk to them about their experiences post-solar, and they are thrilled that they don't have disruption. Uh, they know when there's brownouts just because it's all black around them and they have visitors coming to them to access their power uh, for whatever reason, phones to call loved ones, uh, the medical devices I mentioned, just normal life that the rest of us often take for granted. So solar is an integral part of their culture at this point and is only expanding. The transformation in the energy sector is so much larger than even the IT revolution of a couple of decades ago. The magnitude of the change and the magnitude of how energy will enhance people's lives is just incredible to think about. So for young people thinking of careers, where do you want to have an impact? If you're motivated by climate change, this is the most urgent subset of the sector in this society to impact. There's many, many careers that are going to happen in moving towards the transformation that Wood Mackenzie has as its main mission. Transforming the way we power the planet isn't just a set of words, that's really happening and there's huge opportunity there. Opportunity financially, yes, quality of lifestyle, yes, but also in enhancing other people's lives and giving back at the same time. Creating your career so that you can make the world a better place and be fulfilled at the same time in doing that. That's what our motivation is. So I get great joy when I sit at a family's house that said, you know what, uh, Hurricane Fiona came. I thought the panels were gonna fly off, my roof was gonna fly off. You guys put in batteries and everything was built well. We were the only people on our hill that didn't lose power, so our neighbors came to us and they were out of power for two weeks. Well, I hope for the same situation comes another hurricane that all the rest of those houses have solar and that none of them lose power because we've done a good job creating a reliable power source for rural people in this part of Puerto Rico. Having this opportunity to meet people that I would never realistically have worked with a lot of these people before who have came on um, Let's Share the Sun this year and even connecting with people who've been in previous years has been fantastic and the fundraising efforts that have allowed me to build relationships outside of my normal network as well. So it's been a great opportunity and everybody has been fantastic and brought a lot of their own passions, energies and skills to this experience and it's made it an unforgettable and life-changing experience. It's a, it's a great experience, it's a great adventure. You get to meet people, not only from Woodmark, you know, other Woodmuckers from different parts of the business that you um, perhaps never had any interactions with before. And it's, you know, good for team building, but also just meeting people here in Puerto Rico. There's people from other companies. There's obviously the recipients that you meet, the families. It's, it's all about just making connections with people from basically all around the world. And I think that's, that's great. Estoy demasiado agradecido, no tan solo por mí, sino por mis padres, por mis hermanos, ya que en agradecimiento a ustedes van a poder tener una mejor calidad de vida del día de hoy en adelante. Es indispensable tener esa plata. Para nosotros ha sido el mejor regalo que hemos recibido, porque sin ella no sabían lo que podíamos hacer con tantas veces que se nos va la luz aquí en Calle. So, I interviewed one of them named Sirius. Her name is Anna, and Anna lives in a, at the very end of the road, deep in the jungle. She's been living in there for 43 years. Her husband passed away five months ago or so. And what struck me, what struck me the most, what really shook me was the fact that she was, she felt scared of the light cuts, of being in the dark, in the jungle. And as we were wrapping up the interview, um, we both got really emotional because we could hear the solar panels being finally installed, the buzz of the electricity in the batteries. And, and I could see the relief washing over her. She said she was not going to be scared anymore. No sé, no sé, es que yo no sé cómo explicarte. Lo único que sé es que no me voy a quedar sin luz. Cuando luz se vaya, voy a tener luz todo el tiempo y para estar yo sola aquí, Estar al oscuro no es fácil, porque yo estoy sola. Lo único son los perritos que están conmigo. Y me voy a sentir un poco más cómoda, ¿entiendes? Me voy a sentir cómoda porque no es lo mismo. 
este, si se va la luz, pues se va, pero yo me quedo con la de ustedes. O, es que, o, me repito, es que no tengo forma de agradecerle, de agradecerle lo que están haciendo por mí. Esto es una cosa para mí muy especial. Ustedes son muy especiales para mí.